Hi there, it's um, <coughs> Mr. Evans here. This is a video on cash flow forecasting. So um, it's quite a bit in the specification on cash flow forecasting. It's kind of um, uh, dotted about a little bit. So I'm going to put them all together in um, <coughs> a couple of videos. So how to construct uh, cash flow forecasts, what we're looking at at the moment. Um, there's um, uh, another bullet point here about um, uh, cash flow forecasting and then there is another one uh, on a further section so I'll, I'll do all the cash flow forecasting at once um, and I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, so cash flow forecasting, uh, first of all it's uh, good to have an idea of what we're talking about. Cash flow, simply cash flow is the movement of money into and out of a business over time, much like you might have a uh, pocket money if you're a student or um, uh, be earning money um, in a part-time job or something, you have got cash uh, coming in and you will be spending uh, some money as well. In order to spend money, you need to have money uh, coming in and just like uh, you, cash will come into a business and it will flow out of the business. So where does the money come from? Well, it could be sales revenue, um, cash might come in from equity capital, i.e. Um, uh, shareholders investing in the company or owners putting um, more funds into the business from their own personal savings. Or businesses might finance themselves through debt. So uh, we get uh, money coming into the organisation wherever it's from. Cash also, of course, flows out. We've got startup costs, maybe one-off things that we need to buy, a van, an oven, depending on obviously what the business is. Um, running costs like uh, wages, electricity bills to keep the business going. Um, fixed costs and variable costs. Um, these could be, uh, these, you know, startup and running costs, you know, fixed costs could be running costs like rent, um, advertising etc. Variable costs are uh, things like uh, wages. Okay, so the, you know, these would come under running costs. But just to give you uh, an idea about the, you know, the business has got money coming in um, and it needs that money coming in because otherwise it's not going to have any money to um, spend. So this uh, looks quite complicated and I'm sorry to put it on uh, one slide but we'll have a look at an example in a minute. Um, but this is just to go over how you construct a cash flow forecast and there's um, five main sections of a cash flow forecast. They usually appear in this order but sometimes may not. Um, so uh, you will usually get the cash inflow, sometimes you'll get the opening balance first. Um, uh, and I'll come back to the opening balance in a minute. Um, but cash inflows would include uh, the sales revenue, any bank loans that are expected to be come in, uh, coming in, um, and uh, you would put them in the month or year that you are expected to get them. Cash outflows, things like wages, etc. Uh, you would um, record the cash that's actually leaving the business um, in this section here and then you would get a total inflow and a total outflow and you would know exactly how much money you're predicting is going to come in and how much money you're predicting is going to go out. Once we've got that information we can then calculate the net cash flow. Okay, The, um, the net cash flow is it's quite simple to calculate, it's just uh, cash inflows minus cash outflows. Um, uh, the thing to remember is if we, we, we've got more cash flowing out than we've got flowing in, obviously that will lead to a minus number because this figure will be greater than this one. Um, and in that case, we would express that number in brackets. So I'll show you an example in a minute. Um, the opening balance is the bank balance. How much cash did this business have at the start of the month before it started adding um, cash inflows um, and the closing balance is um, how much money the business is ending the month with. So in terms of calculating the closing balance, how much money they've got in the bank at the end of the month, you would take, okay, so we had um, X amount of money, say we had a thousand pounds 
uh, was our opening balance at the start of this month. Our net cash flow was uh, 250. Uh, we got in 250 more in inflows than we spent in outflows. Um, and so therefore the closing balance is 1,000 plus 250. 1,250 would be our closing balance. Um, now then, and this is where a few students can get confused, the opening balance the following month is going to be exactly the same as the closing balance the month before. Obviously, if um, on the 31st of March you have got um, uh, at, at two minutes to midnight, you've got £4,000 in the bank, um, two minutes after midnight on the 4th of April, four minutes later, you've still got the same amount of money in the bank. So uh, the opening balance is equal to the previous month's closing balance. So um, if we just have a uh, look, here is an example, um, much simpler than the uh, previous slide. So here's the cash inflows, here's the cash outflows for an uh, Often they'll be monthly, this is actually a yearly one, it's from the January 2011 Buzz One paper. Um, but you can see, uh, you can get a calculator out and check it, but uh, 17,850 is the difference between those two figures. Um, they uh, had an opening balance of minus uh, um, 39,000, add 17,850 to 39,000, you get their closing balance. Um, and then their closing balance becomes the opening balance the following month. They added 130,000, um, spent 101,000, net cash flow 28,000, um, and then uh, so on. Okay, so that's how it works. Here's an example of a typical um, question that you may get asked. Um, you won't ever be asked to construct a whole cash flow forecast. That would take far too long in an exam. And to be honest, this skill uh, isn't particularly um, challenging. But you may get a question um, like this, where you are being asked to fill in the missing figures. So um, in, from January to March, um, they've asked us to calculate the opening balance. Okay, so how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to need to uh, rearrange my formula. I've got the cash, so the opening balance, uh, the closing balance, sorry, equals the opening balance plus 27 um, plus the cash flow. So I just need to rearrange my formula. Um, so we finish the month with uh, minus 1,700 pounds. Um, our cash flow that quarter was negative 27,300. So we must have started on a positive number. So I know that I need to add uh, 27,300 to this. And that gives me 25,600 would have been my opening balance. And then you can check that 25,600. Remember, every time you see a bracket, it means a minus figure. So 27, uh, 26, 5,600 minus uh, 27,300 and that gives us our closing balance so that's correct. Um, next one uh, is asking us to calculate the net cash flow so know your formula. The formula for net cash flow is total inflows minus total outflows so very simply 4,000 uh, 49,800 minus 59,400 uh, equals uh, negative 9,600. Remember, of course, to express that negative in brackets. So that's um, constructing cash flow forecasts. Why, we, why do we do it? Well, it helps us to identify cash flow problems in advance, and therefore uh, we can uh, ensure that we take some uh, actions to mitigate any potential problems. For example, we might try and bring some sales forward um, if we're predicting a negative balance. Remember, if a business has a negative closing balance, I mean, this business is um, isn't, it doesn't have the money. You can see here it's got closing balances um, below 
uh, zero in all of these months. Now, unless the business has agreed an overdraft with the bank, it's going to be in serious trouble or some other form of um, uh, of inflow. So, you know, you can't operate. It's just like you. If you've got um, zero in the bank, unless you've got an overdraft, you can't take any money out. So, um, by c constructing the cash flow forecast, by going through this process, um, a business can uh, foresee any problems and then hopefully take some action to mitigate them. Um, this should ensure that they've got sufficient working capital to operate. So I've highlighted working capital in yellow. It's a really good term for you to make sure that you can use. Working capital is the money used for the day-to-day -day running of the business. Okay, so the money that they need to pay wages, to pay suppliers, working capital it ensures a business can keep going. Um, so uh, that is a reason that we create cash flow forecasts. If we don't have money coming in, we can't spend it, and um, if the business will not survive long. Um, why else would we do it? Well, to show good financial management, maybe gain investment. Um, you know, a bank manager or an investor will want to ensure that business, you know, has um, at least gone through the process of cash flow forecasting. It might not be 100% accurate, but at least they've thought through um, the uh, problems that they might face. Um, and finally, might want to ensure a business doesn't have too much cash. You know, too much cash lying around doing nothing uh, isn't particularly effective. It might be better if a business invests in um, some uh, new machinery, maybe invests in new product development, um, try and gain more revenue. Don't particularly, you know, it, it, having too much cash sitting around doing nothing um, is it can be wasteful especially when interest rates are, are so low so um all sorts of reasons to create cash flow forecast essentially the business wants to make sure it has enough liquidity to survive liquidity like working capital is the money you know used for the day-to-day -day operations L liquidity refers to the amount of cash that an organization has um uh, to to run itself day to day Okay, so um, quite a long video there, but um, I hope that helped clarify how to uh, construct cash flow forecasts and the reason that businesses do it.